<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know what what amazes me, y'all? <laughs> it amazes me what privilege really, really, really does to an individual. Um, it, it's crazy because. I always say it's perception, you know, and it becomes clear when you have some people that is sitting there looking at the elephant from the front end and he's swinging his trunk and you feeding them peanuts and he cracking them open and you giving them marshmallows. Oh, you have such a nice, nice vision and image of what the elephant is. Look at it. And you have a perception that that's what the elephant is. And that's all it is. Just feeding him. And like watching him eat the marshmallows and peanuts. And oh, it's glorious. But then you have some people that are sitting in the back of that damn elephant. And all they see is the tail wagging. And they stuck. They right behind him. And all it is doing is shit piling down on him. Shit piling down on them. They stuck in the mud looking up at the elephants behind. And all he doing is just, oh, crapping all over them. Crapping all over them. Crapping all over them. Now, both of them are looking at this elephant. Both of them are, you can't deny that. Both of them right there on the elephant. But they are seeing this animal so damn differently. So differently. And if they don't have a chance to switch places at all, more than likely, if they're racist or prejudiced like that, real severe, they they won't have any um, empathy. Um, they'll just, just be totally apathetic. Um, things will mean more than people that breathe things, you know, like that. Um, so when you understand that they both operate from a different stimulus, then you know that you can have a conversation. But if you got some people that can't even understand that y'all operating off a different stimulus... And now y'all both have to acknowledge how you seeing each other. Then there's no conversation. And you are stuck and you have scales over your eyes because you can't see the other side. Now, I have a definition of privilege that to me just takes the damn cake. And I'm going to read this story to y'all. Um, it was by Pilar Melendez. Okay, and this is about a white supremacist named Augustus Soul Invictus. He so he's back in jail after allegedly stalking his wife. Okay, white supremacist Augustus Soul Invictus, who is facing charges of kidnapping his spouse and their two children in December, he was back in jail Tuesday, just three weeks after he was granted a release. For allegedly stalking his wife. Or the, uh, see, this is how out of touch with some of these people are, right, man. I'm serious. Now, this right here, though, transcends color. But he is a white supremacist. That's all I'm saying. Okay? And they got this mindset, you know, that um, power, take, control. Um, power, take, control. Mm -hmm. Wash, rinse, repeat. Doom, doom. Invictus, a 36-year-old former U.S. Senate candidate and lawyer who once claimed he sacrificed a goat and drank his blood, was charged with aggregative stalking after he allegedly violated the terms of his release and a restraining order according to online jail records. On March 31st, South Carolina Circuit Court Judge Dan Hall granted Invictus who legally changed his name for Aust 
changed his name from Austin Gillespie. A $10,000 bond in light of concerns about being exposed to the coronavirus while he was incarcerated. So they let him out. Mm-hmm. All right? They let him out. Mm-hmm. Harvey Weinstein, he out. Mm-hmm. Bill uh, Cosby in. R. Kelly in. Okay? Don't say nothing about that, though, y'all. Don't say nothing about that. I'm supposed to act like I don't see stuff like that. I remember, because, ugh. See, now, when I was... When I was high, I didn't have to worry about shit like that, right? That's why I always say, why am I straight? Because now I done came down, I done cleared the scale from my eyes, and this is what the reality of everything is. Lies, hypocrisy, gaslighting, privileged people who think they can dump and shit on other people. He's facing kidnapping and aggravated domestic violence charges. So, if it's not black and white, it's men and women. Because that conqueror, that elite, that sick mentality has come to town and turned everybody against each other. Right? Think about it. He's facing kidnapping and aggravated domestic violence charges in South Carolina for allegedly forcing his wife, Anna, Invictus, she at gunpoint to travel with him from South Carolina to Florida. She was able to escape from her husband and return home, she told the police. <laughs> he can't leave her alone. According to the Orange County Sheriff's Office, Anna Invictus called authorities after her estranged husband, who she once claimed had Charles Manson like mind control. See there? had contacted her almost daily since his March 31st release. See, people like that are sick. This is not patriotic. This is sickness. This is mental illness. This is you to come to the fucking mental house. Because that's what's wrong with you. You got a problem. And all these racist institutions that allowed your sick mind to go back out there to wreak havoc on this woman, they need to be held accountable. This damn judge. After days of harassment, Anna Invictus said her husband sent the text, ordered her to bring her two children to Dixon Alzea Park or else. The affidavit states Invictus had cornered his family at the Orlando Park two weeks prior and had been repeatedly texting the kids to be brought there so he could see them. I'm going to plan to see you at four. If she doesn't bring you to the park, I assume she wants to fight. That's what Invictus said in one message to his daughter according to the affidavit. See? These people are crazy. They're not patriotic. They're not patriotic. When she returned an hour later, she said he struck up a conversation with somebody at the park while she waited. She said that while she was talking, and Victus told his daughter to take a picture of her mother with the other man. Augustus then told his daughter, your mother is a whore. See, listen to these, listen to this mindset. 
and Victus was arrested in Maryborn, Florida just after midnight on Tuesday after allegedly contacting his family at least 20 times over the last month. The affidavit um, asked that deputies obtain text messages from the 36-year-old's phone indicating to other individuals that he wanted his wife found along with the photos of her car and license plate. Domestic abuse comes just two months after Anna Evictus urged the South Carolina judge to deny the white supremacist bill because she was afraid he'd kill her if he was released from jail. In a statement, um, she said, she prepared for that statement. She said the long-suffering wife called her husband a violent manipulator who sought out followers for his white nationalist ideologies and who has abused me more times than I can count. These are the kind of people that's out there talking about um, let me go back to work or I'm going to use my gun. Okay. These are kind of, and the kind of women like Anna, what's her name? Megan McCain, that think that's cool. Okay? Okay. This man is not only violent, but he is also a master manipulator. She said this, describing several harrowing incidents where her husband was physically emotionally and verbally abuse her. His public face is very different from the one my family and I have endured. If he is released, he will continue to use his knowledge of the law, his impressive vocabulary, and spectacular ability to manipulate and mold his political followers and women into obedient servants, exactly like the ones you see here today. Sound like Donald Trump? I mean, sound familiar? And Victor's rose to prominence in 2016 when he ran as a libertarian. U.S. as a libertarian U.S. Uh, Senate candidate. During his failed campaign, he admitted that he had slaughtered a goat and drank his blood as part of a pagan ritual three years prior, stating that it was brutal and sadistic. I did sacrifice a goat. I know that's probably a quibble in the mind of most Americans, he said. I sacrificed an animal to the god of the wilderness, yes, I drank the goat's blood. A year after his failed campaign, he was featured speaker at the deadly 27, uh, 2017 Unite the Right White Nationalist Rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, where activist Heather Heyer was killed. He also used his experience as a lawyer to help arrange the legal defense of other members of the movement. He was previously accused of domestic violence, but he was never charged. He is not uh, the stereotypical drunken wife beater, and the victim said in February. He is calculated, violent, manipulative. And he has, uh, uh, and he deserves, he thinks he deserves special attention. I'm sorry. He's manipulative and he deserves special consideration. But you see what they did, don't you? Huh? 
We let him out. And see, that's the problem in America. You know? And so, in a way, even if I don't survive this, COVID-19, ain't nothing going to be the same no more. Nothing. And all the traps this, this evil system think that it's setting for everybody else, they really setting a trap for themselves. With that being said, if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.